good morning, everybody. Happy uh, Thursday, actually. Um, I'm really looking forward to this uh, webinar today. We've got one of our, um, actually our, our main final expense carrier, but one of the best names in the industry, one of the best processes, the best support you could ask for from a carrier. I mean, when you're looking for a whole package for a final expense company, um, they're it. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just a great carrier to work with. So, um, you know, a couple quick housekeeping rules before we get in to the presentation. Uh, first of all, this webinar will be recorded. It'll be sent to you after we're done. Um, it will be hosted on our YouTube channel. With that, please remember all webinars we do are for agent use only, not for use with your end customer. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, other things, we're going to answer any questions you might have uh, to our best ability. If you have questions, please add those in the question box. We will do our best to answer those at the end of the presentation. Uh, if we don't answer your question during this presentation, it's one of two things. A, either we're out of time, it's pretty rare, but every once in a while it does happen. Uh, B, it means that you're asking something that's specific to you and or your client. If so, we will answer those, but we'll get to those on a one-on-one -on -one basis after the webinar. Um, but again, we're here for you, so please ask questions. Um, you know, we do appreciate your time. We know when you're sitting here on webinars, you aren't out at appointments, uh, making uh, income, putting food on your table and paying your bills. So we're going to be as expeditious as we can with still giving you a, uh, a, a good information. So with that, I am pleased to introduce um, not only a carrier partner uh, representative, uh, actually two are on this call, but uh, some good friends, um, Kurt Williamson and Cindy Burks. Kurt, welcome. Yeah, Jim, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate that intro. That's much kinder than I probably deserve. But um, look, guys, uh, any time that I get a chance to talk to producers, um, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I understand that I was a producer myself for 18 years. So I know what it means for you to take a pause and learn a little bit about what a carrier has to offer uh and things like that because look you guys i you guys are out there hustling you're out there hustling and working your butts off and interacting with all these clients and doing all this great stuff so i i absolutely appreciate your time uh with me so we'll go ahead and get into it what i'm going to do today um and i do these things a little bit differently because if this was just a slideshow that you could read and that would be it then i would just send you that but i'm hoping to add a couple things instead of just a big product info dump I'm absolutely going to get into that, but I'm also going to show you a couple things about how to tie together a couple products. Now, the two that I'm going to talk about, mainly we're going to talk about final expense, but I'm also going to talk about how to tie in children's whole life and maybe some other ones with the final expense conversation. Now, Western Market Area already does a great job at final expense, and it's one of these things that I think it's a neglected um, opportunity for a lot of agents, especially those who are real heavy into Med Advantage and Med Sub. Um, just because they're, and I'm not saying you are, but and if this applies to you, just understand that maybe you're just afraid of the conversation, right? Uh, it's not a big deal. It's more about planning than talking to people about them dying. Yes, that's part of it, but I think you'll see uh, a couple ideas in here that I think may be helpful, helpful to you for sure. Um, Mutual of Omaha. Guys, a couple quick things. I'm going to kind of go over who we are. Hopefully most of you know who we are, but I will tell you this much. Uh, in terms of brand recognition, your clients sure the heck know who we are, right? We've been around for well over 100 years. We have a very strong reputation, and I would bet you that if you talk to any of your clients and you said, hey, you know what? I work in the financial services industry, and I partner with a lot of great carriers like Mutual of Omaha. What have you heard of them, or have you heard of them? If you ask those questions, I guarantee you, you're going to get a strong response and it's going to be a positive one. So the more positive blocks you can build in a relationship with a client, the better off you're going to be about them actually listening to and, uh, and following your recommendations in terms of coverage and, and things like that. Um, dedicated team. Yeah, guys, look, uh, 
mutual of Omaha, I have 150 people on a sales support team. I have about as many in my underwriting. You have myself and Cindy Burks as your sales team at Mutual of Omaha. So you have no shortage of support, right? You have all the support you could possibly need. Don't be afraid to make the phone calls. The cool thing about Western Marketing is you guys already have a great group of managers, right? You have a great group of people that are extremely knowledgeable and really good at supporting your business and what you do. So by all means, utilize them. But at the end of the day, if there's Mutual of Omaha specific stuff that you want to come to us with, or questions you have, or maybe there's an underwriting decision that you don't quite understand or whatever, understand that you have a giant group of people that's more than willing uh, to help you out. Simplified issue products, that's what we're talking about today. These are products that require no labs, right? We are as competitive as any carrier out there. Um, we do close to $700 million a year with our simplified issue products. So not only are we good at it, um, a lot of people sell it and a lot of clients buy it because of who we are and because of how good the products are and they work exactly like you're supposed to. Fast and simple underwriting, quoting and apps are easy. I mean, they're really straightforward. We're always, always, always continually improving these things. Uh, and down the road, I do these things probably once a quarter, give or take, and Jim and I get together when I have updates, you will absolutely get them. Because again, down the road, we're always improving these products and that's important. Wild Kingdom, Mutual of Omaha. I, I grew up on this. I'm an old dude, 56 years old. So I've been around for a while. I grew up on this. We brought this back and it's actually in line. And for those of you who may be too young <laughs> and didn't grow up on Mutual of Omaha, this was Discovery Channel before Discovery Channel was around. We reintroduced it back in October and we're up for four Emmy Awards this year because of it. So again, brand recognition, super strong. Golf sponsorships, guys, we sponsor the heck out of all kinds of good stuff. So again, our name is out there. Uh, and I think that's important with whatever carrier you're working with, but this just shows you our commitment to not only creating a positive image and a positive partnership for you, but also that kind of brand recognition with your clients. I won't beat this up too much. I think you guys realize where I'm going with this. Mutual of Omaha is A plus or better rated carrier. We are as financially secure uh, as an insurance company as you're gonna find. We have five different simplified issue products. I'm gonna talk about two of them today, but I just wanna kind of showcase the ones that I do have. I have one of the only IUL Express's simplified issue IULs on the market. We have our Term Life Express, we have our Living Promise, and in there you'll see that there's actually two components to it. And we have Children's Whole Life. And then we also have our Guaranteed Advantage. Guaranteed Advantage requires a health license. That's the go-to when you can't find anything else for your client, really. With Mutual of Omaha, that's kind of your backstop, that if your client has too many health issues, uh, that one is an accident-only policy, but it's a good backstop for those that have some pretty serious issues. But again, if you look at our simplified issue portfolio, Children's Whole Life starts out at two weeks. Living Promise goes up to about 85 years. You can cover a wide range of ages for your client. So there's no shortage of potential solutions for your clients. Cool thing with Simplified Issue, and this is true Simplified Issue. This isn't accelerated. This is you know, nothing along those lines where we may or may not do a paramed. We will not do a paramed. There are no labs with any of these products. There are no attending physician statements, all right? With fully underwritten, sometimes we have to chase those down. That's never something the agent should have to do. But there's no attending physician statements required with this, and it's quick issue. I got 32 awards last year, guys, for fastest to issue, fastest to pay. 32. I work with probably 45, 47 different companies, and I there's a couple other sales directors that work works with about that many. So for us to get that number of awards for that, and this is just the simplified issue portfolio stuff, uh, is important because we understand that. If we're getting your policies issued quickly, that's getting you paid quickly and that keeps your business rolling. And that's exactly what you should want. I will tell you with our simplified issue portfolio, 84% of the time when you hit submit, you're going to get a decision right then and there. That's huge. The other 16% of the time, it's going to be referred to an underwriter because maybe there's some information that we're trying to understand because we do pull from some different data sources. So, when you're utilizing that, if you do see it's been referred to an underwriter, that's a good thing. That means that, hey, we, uh, we like this risk, we want to approve it, but we need to understand it better. 
if it gets referred to an underwriter, that may take another day or so for us to sort out and kind of see. And we may call your client and say, hey, we are getting this, we're getting this. Can you kind of clarify for this? Um, the majority of time when it gets referred to an underwriter, we approve it, a significant majority. It's well over 80% on that one. So if you ever happen to see that it's being referred to an underwriter, don't get too worried about it. That's actually a good sign that we want the risk. We just have to understand. Again, here's our portfolio of simplified issue products, children's whole life, IUL Express, term life express, living promise, and the guaranteed advantage. You'll see some different age bands and death benefit bands in there. We'll get into more of these different products down the road, but specifically today, we're going to be talking about the living promise uh, and a couple other ties in. Here's a dedicated team. And for those of you who don't have it, write down these phone numbers. Again, that's my sales support, 1-800-693-6083. Got a huge team that can help with everything from illustrations if you're doing IULs, product questions and all that. They're, they're, they're killer. This is not something that you're gonna call and be kept on hold for for hours. These guys are quick, they usually pick up um, right away. If not, put your number in a queue and they'll call you right back. It's actually really good. Underwriting, don't be afraid of talking to our underwriters, guys. If you have something that you're unsure of, there's literally an email address, express risk assessment at mutualofomaha.com. If you are unsure, you've gone through the underwriting guide, you can't quite figure out whether or not your client's going to qualify for something, put the information in email and send it to them, right? You can CC me and Cindy Burks on this if you want us to take a look at it as well, but this is how you can pre-qual a client. And I'd encourage you guys, if you run across somebody who has a lot of issues, health issues, and maybe they're on a lot of medications and you can't quite figure out what's going to be a good fix, just type a generic email. We don't need specific information, but you can say, hey, I got a female who's 29 years old. She takes gabapentin for restless leg syndrome. She's also on some meds for this, that, and the other. Would this make a candidate for living problems or IU Express or whatever? Right. So you can just ask the question of, hey, with the health issues that I'm disclosing here, does this make sense? Our guys will get back to you pretty quick and say, hey, yeah, this makes sense or no, nope, I wouldn't put this in for a simplified issue. Maybe this is a fully underwritten or whatever. You'll get the advice that you need if you have one of those complicated cases where you have just a lot of stuff going on. And I run across those quite often. So don't be afraid of them. It's always good to do that. I'd rather you do that or consult with Cindy and myself, or even your, your folks at Western Marketing um, to help you decipher that, then just throw something in the pipeline and hope it works. That's, that's a horrible thing. And anytime you do that, you're bound to go back to your client with a declination. So again, if you have somebody with a lot of issues, uh, don't be afraid of reaching out on that. Hi, Pipeline, again, that's the EF thing. If you have problems with that and need some tech support, uh, there's a good number for you. So living promise. That's our final expense. I do not like the term final expense because it kind of denotes that your clients have zero control over what's happening next. I like living promise whole life because that tells them it's more about planning and it has some semblance of control. It's actually a good thing. So what does that look like? There are three potential outcomes when you apply for our living promise, okay? They will either be qualified for a level benefit plan, they'll be qualified for a graded plan or they'll be declined. Let's talk about the first two, all right? When you submit an application, they'll either, either be uh, offered a level plan or a graded plan. There is a difference between the two and the difference is the determination on their health. I'll show you the actual application here in a second, but just so you can see the differences, with the level benefit plan, issue ages are 45 to 85. That's the prime market for that, because if you think about it, at those ages, um, the people there have had, uh, at some point, probably some life-changing uh, things in terms of parents passing away, grandparents passing away. So they understand the finality behind that, and it's a spot in their brain that you can bring up and talk to people about, right? Because again, this is things that they're, they've experienced themselves, so it's a good, that's a good age group to have as a target. Issue ages. Issue ages are between $2,000 and $50,000 in terms of a death benefit, and the ratings are standard tobacco, non-tobacco. Literally, the question is, has your client used tobacco in the last 12 months, all right? You're gonna run across, and you may run across the marijuana question, right? So some carriers look at smoking marijuana as tobacco or whatever. 
The question is, and just read the question, has your client used tobacco? It doesn't say anything about marijuana. So again, keep that in mind when you're quantifying them as standard tobacco or non-tobacco. Level benefit means we're comfortable. We're super comfortable with their health. We've pulled all the information we need from IntelliScript and pharmacy reports and the Medical Information Bureau. And everything we see and everything in the application sounds good to us. Cool. Level benefit plan. We're going to offer that to them. They will get the death benefit from day one, meaning if they pass away the day after this, we're still going to pay them the, their full death benefit. The graded benefit plan means there's something in the application or there's something in the data that we're pulling that makes us a little uncomfortable, but we want to be able to offer coverage. All right. So when we do that, here's what it looks like. That can be issued between the ages of 45 to 80. The face amounts are a little bit different, 2,000 up to 20,000, and it's just a standard rating. The main difference that I want you guys to understand between the two is that level benefit plan, they are eligible for the full death benefit from day one. The graded plan, there's essentially a two-year pause. All right, so what again, what that means is we're kind of uncomfortable with their health situation, but we want to be able to offer them coverage. So if they pass away within the first two years, we will refund and give them back all of their premiums plus 10%, all right? That's an important distinction. After that two-year period, they will be eligible for the full death benefit. But again, the graded plan is kind of a pause, right? We're a little uncomfortable with what we're seeing with the, the health situation of your client, but we want to be able to offer them coverage. So we're going to take a little bit of a pause. And again, if they pass away within the first two years, they'll be paid their uh, premiums back plus 10%. After that two-year period, they will be eligible for whatever the issue death benefit is. Pretty straightforward stuff. And like I said, there's three outcomes, level, graded, or decline. We'll talk about declinations here in a minute, and I'll show you a way that you guys can really get through these, and you never have to worry about declinations again. Don't read all this, but if you look at the top, and this is in the application, it literally says there's two parts. Part one here, it says, if the proposed insured answers yes to any questions in part one, that person is not eligible for any coverage under this application. So if you're going through this and you're going through this with the client, if they answer yes to anything in part one, stop what you're doing. Just stop what you're doing, make a phone call to either uh, some of your managers there at Western Marketing, reach out to Cindy or myself or my sales support staff, and talk to us about that because if you submit an application and you've answered yes to anything in part one it is an automatic decline so don't waste your time so if you're going through these questions with your clients just read them as they are hey i'm going to ask you a series of yes or no questions all right and just read them just read them to your clients exactly as they're written don't create your own language right? Don't do that. That always creates issues. Just read it as it is and have them answer yes or no. Go through. So again, part one, if they answer yes, stop what you're doing, figure out either something else or make a phone call and get some clarification on it. But again, we're going through part one. They've answered no, okay? They don't have any of these issues. They don't have any of these physical problems. So if they've answered no to everything, go ahead and move on to part two. Part two is where we're going to make the determination between whether we offer a graded or level. Okay. Again, keep in mind, if you answered no, to all the health conditions in part one, you're safe to move into part two. If you answered yes to anything in part one, just stop what you're doing. They're not going to be eligible. So in this instance, they answered no to everything in part one. Let's move on into part two. Right at the top. If the proposed insured answers yes to any questions in part two, that person is eligible only for the graded benefit. That means that these health issues that are in here give us a little bit of a concern that, yep, we want to offer them coverage, but you know what? We're going to have that two year kind of waiting period where if they pass away in the first two years, they'll get refunded their premiums plus 10%. And then after that two year period, they'll get their, their uh, entire death benefit. Again, Read these, read right from here, directly to your clients, right? They're not that, they're not that tricky, right? And go down to question 10, right? In the past 12 months, has the proposed insured consulted a physician for a chronic cough, unexplained weight loss greater than 10 pounds, fatigue, or unexplained gastrointestinal bleeding? Yes or no? Just read the question, okay? 
So again, if they answered no to everything in part one, you moved into part two and they've answered no to everything here, great. They're most likely gonna be offered a level benefit plan. If they answered no to everything in part one and they answered yes to a couple of questions in here in part two, then they're most likely gonna be offered a graded, all right? So pretty easy, straightforward stuff. I just want you to make sure that we understand the difference between what we're asking in part one and what we're asking in part two and the difference between a level plan and a graded plan. Again, not that complicated, pretty straightforward stuff. Here's your three outcomes, level benefit, graded benefit, declination, all right? We already talked about it. Again, I'm gonna keep beating this home because people do it all the time and I just wanna make sure that's crystal clear. Level benefit, that means they answered no to everything in part one, they answered no to everything in part two. Graded benefit, that means they answered no to everything in part one and maybe yes to something in the application in part two. Not eligible for coverage, that means they answered yes to something in part one or we pulled something from the data sources that contradicts what's going on in the application and we can readily verify that, all right? Because let's face it, some clients, lie. well, maybe, maybe back up. I don't think clients lie. I think they're guilty of omission, okay? You may have one or two folks out there who think they're gonna um, get over on you, but ideally, that's not the case. They're guilty of omission. They think that this is this, this health issue is not gonna matter. They think that you're not gonna care about it. They think that mutual is not gonna care about it. It's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. If you set up your conversation with your client this way and you just tell them, hey, you know what? I'm gonna ask you a series of health questions and I need you to tell me everything so I know what options I should be presenting you, all right? Don't keep anything from me. And even if you think it doesn't matter, I still need to know. Then you can roll into your health questions, right? When's the last time you've been to your doctor? Are you on any medications, whether they're prescription or over the counter? You gotta ask those, you gotta ask those. Because the minute they say they're on any prescription, it's okay. What, what is the name of the drug that you're on? What's the dosage of it? What was it originally prescribed for? You have to find out why they're on medications. The other part, and you need to have this conversation too, and you may hear this. They may say that they were prescribed something, but they chose not to take it, okay? You gotta be real careful with that one because what that sounds like and what that feels like is that they were recommended a course of treatment from a doctor and they chose not to do it, all right? That one becomes problematic when people try to self-diagnose and self-medicate. That always becomes a problem for you because then what happens is if you submit that, we pull the records and we're saying, well, hey, they were prescribed this. You don't get the opportunity to tell us, well, they chose not to. Plus that's a bad thing to be doing anyway. So be real careful when you get to that. And if that does come up, that's a phone call to sales support or your management staff or me or Cindy or whatever to talk through that because maybe simplified issue is not the right way to go. Again, guys, the big difference between simplified issue and fully underwritten is that simplified issue is, do your clients fit in this box medically or not? It doesn't give you a lot of latitude to make a case for your client. It really doesn't. It's, do they fit in this box? Great, yes or no. Fully underwritten does give you a little bit of latitude because we know more. We're gonna require a physical, we're gonna do blood work and all this other stuff, which we don't do with our simplified issue. That's why it's structured the way it is. Again. That's the reason that you can also get coverage in the same day is because of how simplified issue works. But again, if you run across some weird medical things, hey, let's talk about it. We pull from the Medical Information Bureau. We pull from IntelliScript, Melman, pharmacy checks and all this stuff. Phone interviews. Guys, if we get conflicting information, right, something's different on the application than what we're seeing in the MIB or the pharmacy, we may reach out and do a phone interview with your client and be like, hey, you know what? You've applied for insurance for this we see that you were prescribed this you know can you kind of fill in the blanks again if we do that that's a good thing that means that it wasn't issued right away it means it was referred to an underwriter it means we want to understand the risk and i don't know if you guys realize this or not but every time you make a sale you are making three sales, right? You're making one to the client, that's the obvious one. You're making one to yourself, yeah, is this the right thing to do? And you're making one to the insurance company. Hey, Mutual of Omaha, this is my client. This is who they are, this is their medical history, and this is why you should want to insure them, right? So again, 
us wanting to understand the risk is a good thing. That only happens a small percentage of the time when we do refer to underwriting. Primarily, you're gonna get an answer, like I said, about 84% of the time, the minute you hit submit, you'll get an answer. And that's cool. Because again, that gets your client coverage quickly and it also gets, uh, gets you paid quickly. Final expense is not difficult. It's extremely easy. The trick is bringing up the conversation. Um, I had forgotten what the true cost of insurance is for a final expense call, or not the cost of insurance, but the cost of a funeral. Um, my father-in-law passed away back in February, and I hadn't done that in a number of years. I mean, I lost my mom and dad seven, eight years ago, so I went through it then, but I hadn't thought about the cost of it then. Uh, average cost of a funeral in the U.S. is somewhere between eight and 12, give or take where you're at, eight, eight or $12,000. Most people in the United States, if they get hit with a bill that's $500 or more, they have a hard time managing it. And that usually ends up on a credit card, which is, you know, uh, horrible because a lot of people are putting a lot of debt on credit cards. So I don't like the idea of people putting a funeral expense on a credit card, even though it does happen. So having this kind of courageous conversation is important. And a really good lead into it is, hey, you know what? I was doing some work with my friends and family as well as some of my clients and I came across something that Mutual of Omaha offers. I want to talk to you about it and bring it up. So, and it's a really, really good way to introduce yourself as somebody who's thoughtful. And if you have clients that maybe you haven't talked to uh, this kind of stuff before, it's a really good way to bring it up. The minute you say, hey, I was thinking about you because it's true. You were thinking about them. Hey, I was thinking about you for this. That opens the doors for you for the final expense conversation. And it's really straightforward. Guys, this is a shameless plug. I do this all the time. And I do this in every presentation and I do it for a reason. When you're talking about living promise to anybody, remember the age brackets, 45 to 85. This is the addition to that. This is absolutely a pivot point for you that you should be asking with everybody you're talking with about living promise or final expense in general. This is my family. That's my first grandson, Carter. It's my daughter, Taylor. That's my okay son-in-law, Jordan. No, actually, he's a good dude. I like him. But when you're sitting down with people in that age bracket and you talk to them about their living promise, final expense needs, your next question should be, do you have any kids or grandkids, right? Do you have it while we're talking at the end, you can you can set it up just like this. Hey, at this point, what I do with my friends and family, as well as my clients, is I typically talk to them about their kids and grandkids. Do you have kids or grandkids? And if they say yes, then your next thing is tell me about them. Tell me about them. Give them another place to go with that positive reinforcement. So now they're feeling better because I'm getting excited just looking at the picture of my grand grandson here because he's awesome. You're gonna give them another positive experience that you're gonna stack on the other one. And now you're just creating an environment where they're gonna to listen to your recommendations, all right? Let me show you a couple of more. There's my goofy grandson that day at, when he was going to uh, preschool. There he is again. There's grandson number two. Grandson number two, born in February, uh, or excuse me, January. That's, <laughs> that's Katie, he's awesome, right? There he is again. There's my daughter. Guys, if you ask the question, when you're talking about living promise and final expense, do you have kids or grandkids? This is where it's gonna lead you. This is a family that you're gonna to wanna to protect as well. My daughter's a master's degree teacher. My son-in-law's an engineer. They have two kids. Do you think this is a family that you wanna be referred to? Yeah, all day, all day. There's five policies out of the one if you do this right, if you talk to somebody about a living promise and say, if you're talking to me again, I'm 56 and I referred you to this, you just turned a living promise policy into a whole bunch of stuff, right? There's potential IULs. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with this family to make sure they're protected, right? And I think this way, because thinking strategically is important. Um, when you're looking at the longevity relationships that you have, as well as being a real salesperson, right? Sales isn't bad, you know, it's really not. In this industry, we have this goofy image of it, but sales means to be of service. So how can I be of service to this client, uh, to, these, to these clients and to this family? I'm gonna give them options. I'm gonna talk to them about living promise and their final expense, and then I'm gonna ask them about their other family and their extended family. 
and see what they have here that I can help out. Here's why I'm getting at this, right? Children's whole life. This is the easiest life insurance policy you're ever going to sell. It really is. Keep in mind, living promise, our final expense is a whole life policy. So is this one. Here's children's whole life. Here's how cool this is. That's the app. That's the application for this. Two questions. Two questions. And oh, by the way, you can apply for multiple children, grandchildren's coverage on one application. You don't have to fill out separate ones. There are literally two health questions on this. It doesn't get any easier. Has the proposed insured been diagnosed or treated? Heart or circulatory system birth defect, mental developmental disorder, including autism and Down syndrome, any other chronic medical condition which has required your care within the past three years. The reason why this is important, and I want you guys to think about this. I'm just going to ask a rhetorical question because I'm going to answer it right away. At what age do you think ADHD and autism is typically discovered? Right? Think about that. It's usually when they get into school. It's usually at the age of, say, kindergarten, preschool, somewhere in there and on. So they're going to be four, five, six years old, right? The issue ages for this are two weeks to 17 years. So if you catch them early, you can get them in here with literally just two questions, right? Well before they've been diagnosed with autism and ADHD, right? So again, it's as straightforward as it comes. Two health questions. Here's what it does. Helps cover costs associated with unexpected loss. We get that. Children's whole life is a does have a death benefit. Do not, do not, do not put that at the forefront of this conversation, right? You got me in a positive place. You got me in a positive way of thinking. I don't want you talking about my kids and grandkids dying and a death benefit. Yes, that's part of it. Yes, that's part of it. And you can talk to your client about it. The next part of it, it's a whole life policy. Yeah, it does generate some cash value right, that they can utilize. Here's the important part. It provides protection for the child's future insurability. We're going to get into this in a second, right? So your obvious lead into this when you're talking to your clients is, hey, what if you could do something for your kids or grandkids? What if you could leave a legacy for them of something that's a really solid financial component in their foundation? What do you think about that? And ask them. Two week old. Two week old can be approved for fifty thousand dollars worth of coverage for nineteen bucks a month. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap, and it's awesome. Here's the cool part of it. You know, keep in mind again, I said provides protection for a child's future insurability. Fourteen days and seventeen years. Face amounts five thousand to fifty thousand. No medical exam. Two health questions. Grandparents can sign the app without the parent's permission. That's not us trying to get around the parents. That's us acknowledging the fact that families are spread all over the place. And we want to allow the grandparents who do have an insurable interest in this to provide a legacy for the grandkids. Again, yeah, it does build some cash value. Yeah, coverage is guaranteed for the age of 100, which is that's what's going to end out. And then they'll get paid. Guaranteed insurability rider. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And a waiver of premium. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Here's the important part. The guaranteed insurability rider, right? Remember what I said earlier on is that we guarantee the insurability of your child or grandchild. You can up the insurance on this policy five times during any of the following events. There's seven times that they can up it, they can choose five. When they get married, purchase of a home, birth or adoption of a child, and when they turn 25, 30, 35, or 40. So out of those seven instances, they can pick five of those to up their insurance up to and equal to the original benefit amount. So let's do some fun math here. If they were originally issued a $50,000 policy and they choose five more times to up their policy equal to that amount, what's their total? Well, their total is the original $50,000 and if they upped it $50,000 five more times, that's $250,000. The combination of those is now they have a $300,000 policy and they never had to undergo any underwriting. They never had to undergo anything. That's the power of the children's whole life. That's why I'm telling you when you have the opportunity to talk about life insurance and you have the opportunity to talk about final expense and our living promise, you always, always, always go down this route. 
This is extremely valuable and it lets you turn one policy into multiples, which is what you want. Number one, it's the right thing to do. Number two, it keeps your clients with you. More policies with a group and a family will always make them sticky, right? They make them want to stay with you, even if they're approached by other brokers out there, because they're going to be, right? If you have multiple policies on it, the more likely are they are to stay with you. Typically, the stats are like this. If you have one policy on an individual, the likelihood of them sticking with you when they're approached by another agent is somewhere around 30%, right? If you have two policies on uh, someone, the likelihood of them sticking with you if they're approached by another broker is about 57. If you have three, they're bulletproof. 93% of the time, if they're approached by anybody else, they will stay with you regardless. So multiple policies not only keep your client with you, but it's also the right thing to do, guys. It's absolutely the right thing to do. Here's what it looks like. All right, call it the Living Promise Triple Pay. Triple play. 55-year-old non-smoking female, $10,000 death benefit, $27.71. There is an accidental death benefit rider that you can add to that. What it essentially does is doubles the benefits should they pass away in an accident. I almost always add that on there. It is dirt cheap. So in this example, it costs $2.61, okay? What that means is if the female passes away, she has the original death benefit of $10,000. If it's by an accident, say a car wreck or something like that, we will double it and we'll pay her $20,000. She also decided to insure two grandkids, right? A five-year-old granddaughter, 12-year-old grandson, each for $30,000. Total cost for both of those is $30.75. So the total for this triple pay, pay is $61. $61.07, man. If this doesn't get any easier and you literally tied together multiple policies on a group, right? The other part of this is that now you set up a relationship where you're looking out for them, you're looking out for their family, and when things come up and life events change, you're gonna get the phone call and then you get to interact with this family again. That's why it's super important for you to think a little bit more strategically about what am I doing when I'm sitting down with a client? You can lead with product, nothing wrong with that. Hey, I wanna to talk to you about this, but ask some additional questions. Get good, ask at least five additional open-ended questions when you're having a conversation with a client. Get them to talk, get them to share, because it's important for not only you to understand that, but it opens up a lot of opportunity for you to be very, very helpful to a lot of families, all right? Good stuff. Guys, that's the end of the product stuff. Something I wanna mention real quick, we have the four quarters clubs, okay? This is an incentive for you guys. A lot of people participate in it. And I'm just using 2022 production. If you do $25,000 of production with us in a quarter, we'll give you a 10% bump. Here are two people that I did it with back in 2022. The numbers have only got up since we do this. Again, it's called the Four Quarters Club. Larry, he's actually a producer, been around for a while. Got a pretty high placement and persistency rate. Um, so for Larry in 2022, I paid him an additional 12,351 bucks. He hit the production credits, which you get one credit for every dollar that you sell in simplified issue products. And we do the bonuses accordingly, you get paid each quarter. So for Larry, you can see the payouts right there. So for his one year, we paid him 12,351. Ashley, she was a relative newcomer back in 2022. Um, really good, really good at tying together policies, right? Really good at tying together and asking a lot of family questions, right? Um, for her, I paid her a little over $22,000. Those are very realistic. And those are 2022. Uh, 2023 was even higher in terms of what we paid out. 2022, we paid 145 agents. They qualified for at least one payout in the year. 27 earned over 10 grand. Last year, we had uh, 65 people that we paid over 10 grand. Average agent payouts been somewhere around 6,800. So again, guys, when you do production with Mutual of Omaha, not only do we pay you quick, not only do we get your clients covered quickly, but we give you additional incentives to do the work with us, right? Four Quarters Club is a good thing. Again, guys, keep in mind, Living promise is not the end of the road. It's a great product, but I want you to expand on that. So when you're talking about living promise and final expense, always, always, always ask the question, do you have kids? Do you have grandkids? Tell me about it. That opens up doors of opportunity and children's whole life is a killer one to add. And it's super easy. Guys, there's me and Cindy. Okay, you got the phone number for our sales support. You got the phone number for our underwriters and the email address to that. 
There is Cindy and I. Again, you guys have an insanely talented management group at Western Marketing, but I also want you to be able to get a hold of me or Cindy when you can. Think of us as your sales team. Uh, I have close to 30 years of experience in this, and so does Cindy. So between the two of us, you're getting 60 plus years. Um, we can be pretty helpful without a doubt. And again, like I said, you guys have a great management structure and just supremely awesome group that you're with. But I want to throw as much resources as I can at you. Um, I didn't put it in here, but I do want you to have it. There's a website that all of you can go to. It's www.mutualofomaha.com slash simple. That has all our simplified issue products in it. It has product guides. It has underwriting guides. It has highlight sheets. It has all that stuff. A lot of really good stuff in there, really good information for you from our simplified issue portfolio. Um, guys, that's really all I have for you today. Like I said, I was going to keep this short and easy. It's super simple, but there's some strategy behind it. And I want you to just think about how you're tying these things together. But again, keep doing what you're doing. You guys are doing a really good job this year of Living Promise. I know there's a lot more out there in terms of the final expense market, but being able to tie together Living Promise, children's whole life, that's going to be a really good component uh, for your production in the future, without a doubt. Hey, Kurt, uh, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Just wanted to add a couple uh, quick things. First of all, um, you know, Mutual of Omaha, right? Like uh, name brand recognition, um, that saves you uh, sometimes a pretty big hurdle uh, when you guys are out sitting in front of your clients. Because as, as we all know, there's a lot of other carers out there that your clients never heard of, and sometimes that that's your first thing you've got to sell is who the carrier is how long they've been around will they pay the claim you know all that uh, when you when you market a mutual of omaha product obviously you've got the you know the foundation of insurance for lack of a better term as far as brand recognition with your clients um you've got a great opportunity as kurt said to sell not only uh, living promise, but also their uh, children's policy. Um, what a great time to sit down and just talk to people about real life potential, right? And and making sure they and the family are are insulated from what could be a financial burden. Obviously, nobody wants to think about their kids or grandkids uh, passing away, but if if they do have kids and grandkids, it's it's a really important conversation to have. And you're the insurance expert. Uh, one other thing I want to say is, you know, part of the great thing about final expense is it doesn't matter what your clients spend it on. I know, I know we talk a lot about funeral costs when we talk about final expense, but, uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of talking about happy things, uh, or at least mixing them in. And what I mean by that is, Mutual of Omaha doesn't say you have to use the death benefit for a casket or cremation or, you know, insert sad thing here. It could be a celebration of life trip. So uh, grandma or grandpa passes away. Their favorite spot was, you know, Maui, Hawaii. Maybe if they don't, if the family doesn't need the funds to pay for the burial, they've already got that prepaid or, or taken care of. Maybe what's important to them is uh, going on a celebration of life trip. So this can be a very positive, happy, happy gift that's given to the beneficiaries. Um, you know, we we see a lot of things that are important to people that aren't necessarily what we think of uh, when we think of death benefits on on life insurance, especially final expense, the way it's uh the way it's sold by some agents. Um, you know, I, I know Kurt did a great job. Uh, I don't see questions in the question box. However, if you do have questions, we're we're happy to stay on a minute or two to see if there's there's questions. Well, well, uh, so now's the time to do that. Um, I'd be remiss uh, again. My name is Jim Codney. I'm the national sales director here. I manage the life and annuity team. Well, I'm waiting to see if you do have any questions. I'd be remiss not to give you our direct number. Uh, as Kurt said, um, they're willing to help you out. But I, I really would appreciate if you ever have an issue with Mutual of Omaha, need help with a quote or anything, or any of our other carriers, that you call us first. 
Um, that's our job, right, is to support you. And if we need to, we'll get our care partners uh, involved. Uh, not that I'm saying you're never allowed to call anybody. I'm just saying, you know, you signed up with us for the support that Western Marketing committed to, and, and we want to live up to that commitment. Our, our office number is 800-852-7152. Again, 800-852-7152. Now it doesn't look like we have any questions in the in the question box. The great part about products like Kurt talked about today, especially because they're simplified issue, is is they're actually easy to understand, and and that's the beauty of Mutual of Omaha and the products uh, that that Kurt's been talking about. If you need anything, let us know. As I said, we will get out to you all a recording of this uh, webinar here shortly. Or not. Again, thank you very much for spending time with us. Kurt, Cindy, as always, thank you for your friendship and your partnership. And make it a great day, everybody. Take care. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.